Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create Apache Cordova hooks in your Apache Cordova PhoneGap or Ionic Framework project. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with Apache Cordova hooks, what they are are uh, scripts that are run uh, at various times in your application build cycle. So you can have the scripts run uh, before files are prepared, you can have them run after your um, after your project has been built, uh, there's 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 a ton of uh, different different hooks that you could use. So in this tutorial, uh, to keep things simple, we're going to go ahead and create a hook that is run before the files are prepared for building, and this hook is going to run a script that will delete uh, garbage files from your project because uh, nobody likes garbage files, they uh, cause excess mass to your binary file. Um, overall they should be uh, not included during the build process. And this, this hook will take care of that. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a new Apache Cordova uh, project. Uh, for this tutorial I'm going to just do a base Apache Cordova project but you can go ahead and use the same steps inside of uh, your PhoneGap or Ionic Framework project. So let's go ahead and do the following. So navigate into your test project and we're going to go ahead and add some platforms. And even though I'm adding these, we're not necessarily going to be using them. So just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and, and do it for Mac as well. If you're not on a Mac, don't try to add the iOS platform because it won't work. It ha you have to be on a Mac to do iOS. So let's go ahead and clear that. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and open up the project that we just created in our favorite editor. In this example, I'm going to be using uh, Adam.io. So I, I went ahead and I opened up our project, and you'll see that there's a hook, hooks directory with only a readme file in it. So let's go ahead and create a new directory inside of our hooks directory and call it before prepare. The naming convention is very specific. Uh, there are uh, plenty of hook types to choose from. I think there's around 32. Uh, but in this particular example, we're doing before prepare. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is, by default, uh, chances are it won't have the correct permissions because the hook has to be able to run the script uh, as an exe, like uh, it has to be able to execute it. And when we create it on Unix and, and Linux, chances are it won't have that permission. So let's go ahead and give it that permission. So from the terminal we can uh, commod it as 777 and then hooks before prepare. You know what, we didn't even actually create the file. I apologize. So let's go ahead and create the file that we're going to use. Uh, in this example, we're going to call it uh, 01 junk cleanup.js. Now we can go ahead and uh, change the permissions on it. All right, now it's all set up and ready to go. So you might ask, why did I uh, call it 01? Well, scripts are run uh, alphabetically uh, inside of your hooks directories. So by calling it 01, chances are we're going to have this be the first script to be run uh, before prepare. Um, so maybe you have 10 scripts in there. Uh, you can name them appropriately so that way they get run in a particular order. All right, let's start coding it. We're going to be coding it. Uh, for with Node.js JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do the following. <clears throat> All right. 
So we're gonna we're gonna add a few dependencies into our script. Gonna require the file system, and then we're also gonna require a path. So the next thing we want to do is we want to determine which folders are going to have the junk cleared out of. And I'm just going to create a random array. And we're going to tell it we want to, we want to clear out the JavaScript directory and the CSS directory from all junk. <coughs> So the next thing in our script we want to do is we want to loop through these directories. And every time that directory is hit, we want to uh, do some kind of callback for the item. In this case, we're going to call a function that we have not yet created yet. So we're going to enter the uh, www and then the folder. So <laughs> if you, I'm assuming you're familiar with your project at this point, the www is going to be this this uh, root www folder, and then we're going to be clearing out this particular CSS folder and this particular JavaScript folder. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and create that process uh, files function that we, we just started. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to read the directory that we passed in. So we're going to read the directory, and we're going to be re returned with a list of files and directories that reside in this directory. So let's go ahead and do the following. <clears throat> because in our list, oh, we didn't do a list yet. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. So we're reading it, um, what we can do is we can check to see if there was an error reading the directory. We can do that by doing console.error. And that will break out of it. All right, now we're going to list through all of the files and directories. As you can see, this this loop function is pretty familiar. It is uh, for iterating through our list. And now we can go ahead and give it the file name. So what we're doing here is we have the file, it, it's a relative file name. So we want to include the absolute path, which is www, then the folder, and then the file with the extension. So now that we have that created, uh, let's go ahead and check out the stat of the file to see whether or not it's a directory. So we can do uh, fs.stat and then file. And then we're going to create a callback function here. All right. So we're going to do the following. If uh, stat is uh, not a directory, then we're going to go ahead and care about it. So in other words, we are not going to recursively check all of the directories in our project. We only care about files because this is a very simple example. So with that said, uh, we've determined that our file is, is not a directory. So we're going to do some, some logic here. I'm going to say switch and then 
have base name file. And the reason for this is because remember, we our file is no longer just the relative path. It is our full path to the file. It's not just the file name. So we just want the, the file name in this case. Uh, we don't want everything that comes with it. So in this situation, we're going to say uh, if our file is a DS store file, because if you're on a Mac, you're familiar that Macs love to create those kind of garbage files. We're going to say if we're on Windows, it's a thumbs.db file. Uh, and then the default case uh, is that we're not going to touch the file. So we're going to say console.log, skipping file, because we, we only want to delete the junk files. We are going to skip over every file that is not specifically declared. All right. So right now we've, we've discovered these two files. Now we want to actually delete them. And that can be done with an unlink. And then inside of our callback, we're doing the following just to say that we've deleted it. So if it, if it finds the DS store file, it's going to pass it into the unlink function and then the callback for this function, uh, provided there's no error, technically we can do this. If error, then uh, console.error, there was a problem removing file. And then we can say, uh, something like this, error, just like that, oops, it's adding some extra brackets. This is actually a log, and we're going to do the same thing for um, the thumbs db. Again, you don't, you don't need to include an error message if you don't want to. All right, so to, to reiterate here, we've included a few dependencies. We've determined which folders we want to scan, and then we're going to scan through them. Uh, and in each in each folder, we're going to look at all files in the folder, ignoring directories, and we are going to remove the DS store and thumbs.db files. Um, just just to confirm this, we're, uh, because I I don't think Adam creates temporary files, so I'm going to go ahead and create a mock file. So we're going to do the following touch, and then www.js, and then thumbs.db. All right. So let's go ahead and test it out. So to test it out, we can, we can test it uh, two different ways. Let's go ahead and, and try it uh, the first way by running Cordova prepare. Because what's happening here is this script is being run in before the prepare happens, uh, so this can be executed with the prepare state with the prepare uh, command. So let's go ahead and run it, and there was an error. So let's see why. Oh. So it looks like the error happened possibly for, for two reasons here. Let's go ahead and see if this theory corrects it. No. So, so that uh, theory did not correct it. All right, so the error was actually because I made a typo on line one. I had EVN when it should have been ENV for environment. So 
So let's go ahead and create that file again that we had made because I I had removed it during my testing. So uh, www.js and then thumbs.tv. All right. So like we did before, let's go ahead and do uh, prepare. So it ran our hook. It skipped over the index.js file and uh, index.css file, but it discovered our thumbs.db and removed it. So that, that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and create that file again. The other way to run it is during the build process. So if we do Cordova build Android, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to run our cleanup hook and then it's going to build. So as you're able to see, um, we use pure, pure JavaScript and Node.js. Uh, we can add as many folders as we want. We could even make it smarter. We could do recursive uh, checks inside of the folders that we give it. You can give it more files to clean up. Um, maybe maybe you've got other file types that you'd like not included in your project. Hooks are a great way uh, to do things. There, there are many many good things you can do. You could add application icons during build. You could uh, lint and uglify your code. You can you can do a, a ton of different great things. And this is just one of many examples.